So do you eat the other one? Uh, I'm sure he did. Where's that? Okay, so I got the bearings all cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and lube these and put them back in the bike. <laughs> He must have an affinity for plastic. He chewed that one up. He didn't eat the plastic, though. He don't eat plastic. No. It was all there. I threw it away, but it's just pretty chewed up pretty good. Though. He got into it. Didn't have a problem? No. Good Scooby. Yeah, good Scooby. Okay, now when you put the two bearings together like this, and you stack them up, you have to have a spacer between the center part or it only hits on the outside edge and it, it locks the bearings up. So that's what they make this little washer for. It's a little cup washer. It goes over the bearing like that. And you put the two together. You get a spacer. There's a little bit of space between them so it, it doesn't load the bearings. So that way you don't put pressure on the side of the bowl. The bowl is inside of a cup race area. And if you push it on one side or the other, it'll kill the roller. So that's what they do, this washer. So you gotta make sure you put these washers in there and don't, don't lose them. The other thing is we got a stop washer that goes in the hub, you, only, you beat it down until you hit it. So we'll put that in first, so we only go so far. Okay, now, you want to put some lube on these or just want them dry? Put some lube on them. Oh. Okay, I'll do it. Greasy. Okay, we're going to put some of this expensive ass racing stuff on here, see how it holds up. You know how long it's going to load. This stuff's gooey. It's extra thick. So how much you want to put on? Ten bucks worth or twenty bucks worth? Ha 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 ha. That's a I'll go with the shit. Let's let's be. Uh... Oh, Twenty bucks. <laughs> Pack them all the way. Pack them. <laughs> yeah, this container is uh, I had like seventy bucks or eighty bucks for this container or something like that. I forget how much it was. <laughs> they got one that's three hundred sixty bucks a two. Really? That's the NASCAR grease. The difference in the grease is the amount of stuff they put in the grease. I'm trying to get to make it, put it in little small containers so we can sell it for the Harley guys. For doing their, like their, those new uh, twin cam bearings. Uh huh. Those modern ball bearings that always fail in about 20 miles. Put some of this good grease in there, they should live just about forever. It'll have less drag, which makes them get better mileage and more horsepower, more speed. Of course, they don't always care about that part. The more mileage part they probably care about. Makes them a lot more reliable though. Hmm. Okay. Now it's got grease in the bearings there. It's lubed. Tight. I'm about to get a longer finger pretty soon. <laughs> get, a, get a knife and shorten up the tube. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> longer finger is not the answer? Well. It's definitely a Definitely a different feeling grease than regular grease. A lot thicker. Kind of hard to describe it. It's not quite like a putty, but it's definitely a <coughs> gooey here, regular grease.
I'm putting way more probably than we really need in here. So the next time we tear it apart and you go, so we put 10 pounds of grease and five pounds. That's right. We'll know, we'll know who did it. We'll know who did it. <laughs> Basically, all you need is just enough to get in the bowl wraps, and then that's all you need. I'm trying to pack it into the bowl wrap is the problem. <laughs> All right, well, they're in there pretty good, so there ain't no extra, just packing it in. So, right here, it loosens up. There, that's when I get the roller start to work freely then. See how it scooches some back up on the outside edge? See, that's why you know you got too much in there. So that amount that scooches up on the outside, that's how much you got too much. That's I'm going to put this in after I beat it down. You want a paper towel? No, I still got another one to go here. This has a three bearing system. Now this one here, I can't put grease on the other side because it's got a shield on it. Right. <coughs> so I have to pack it all in from this side. So this one will have less grease packed in there. So this will be the test if we can get away with half the grease. We have to play back the video and see which one we didn't lube it correctly. <laughs> There's also only one bearing on this side too, not two, so it has to work with two bearings. Alright, it's packed in there now. See how I made more noise quicker? Now I'm dirty. Now this is expensive grease we already reuse it. Paper towel if you want. No, I'm good. Make sure we reuse that. You know, so it good is by how hard it is to get off my fingers. I have a greasy grease tube. Okay. This is one we use. I'm not sure how much easier that really was. Put the shield one on this side. That way we keep the brake dust out. We didn't have much brake dust in there, did, did we before? <laughs> mm. Before it wouldn't turn, remember? You can turn them both now. That's a good sign. Okay, now you put your tube in there. Keeps the bearings from going in too far. Cycle this series, okay? Try to. Right? I'm 
much of this stuff cost. We're going to make sure we use it all up. Or not. It's over by the bike. It's right here. Oh, you got it? Yep. Uh oh. You got dirty. It's going to be 200 degrees before. Mm -hmm. Or dirty floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody forgot to put grease on it. Damn. So a dollar worth or 50 cents worth? It's probably a buck. Buck. That's why I don't have to worry about the seal or bearing it. It's got a seal on the side. Fancy tool that. Tight. rotates. Okay, now for the final test. Does this go in the bike? Does rotate. Definitely a palm press fit. No extra clearance. Try to center the bearings up a little bit. Center it. Okay, so now you can see the brakes work. Where's your brake at? Back here behind you. Come on. Got it. Right here. We got this working a lot easier. I'm going to make it work even easier yet.
dry. Yeah, it had some muck in there. <clears throat> some dried on grease. Wasn't totally dry. Buck fifty. Oh, I think we're at least up five dollar now. We shot the whole load on this one. Broke the bank. We'll call out 50 cents. Mark's not going to like we're picking on his grease. Evenly distributed the grease. It appears to have some grease on it. Not a lot, though. Rust down, it doesn't do anything else over there. to be on. I got grease on your chrome. You charging, charging me for that polish? <laughs> That's 50 cents. Yeah. I took a dollar worth of grease off, Bill. That's a good bet, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're 50 cents in the hole right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing money. I'll you know, charge you 50 cents for the log table. We'll call it even. How's that? Okay.
It's the rationing tube. It's plugged up. 90% plug. It's powder. It takes forever to get it to come out. Now we're using red lock tonight because we don't want it to come off. How tight was this? Oh, well, that's not a problem. Sometimes these get really tight and it binds up the return mechanism. So obviously it's pretty free. This will help keep the corrosion down. on this side here than on this side. We'll put it back on this side. Just a brown coming out, that's rust. Okay. Need to go back on the break. Hold that. Before it would release, remember? Mm hmm. As soon as I let go, it just keeps moving. The drag. Alright. We'll have to reset this pivot up. It's back in the black like before. Okay. At least enough so we'll put it together. Okay, it's ready to go back on the bike. Here, this here, this here, definitely this. Put it down. The brick didn't fall out. Hmm. Crank her down, boss. Crank her down. Yep. Sure, the slot is in the uh, axle pivot where it belongs. We got Scooby. Okay, slow down, slow down.
started. Okay, how close are you to your spot? You look like you're pretty close. until it lines up so like that and push it in lift up and push okay it's in and then I'll get put this side here in two flats gotta go in we in on my side there was a 12 inch crescent Go ahead and jack it up, get it up in the air. Make sure your hand can go into this so you don't get jammed in there. You know, nice that spins now. You hit the brake? You didn't do that before, did it? No. Nope. that. Big improvement. You doing, Scooby? Works a lot freer than it did before. Maybe it'll start to work again. Turn the brake on and hold it on. Ready? Yeah, hit it. Hold it. Hold on. Somebody's been in my toolbox. Okay, let go. It still doesn't like being tight like it's supposed to. So you put the brakes on, hold it on, and you tighten the pivot up. It's supposed to center everything up, but this bike it doesn't seem to like to center. Hit the brake couplers. There we go. Get it. Get it. See how it's releasing now? Before it would lock up and stay locked, it wouldn't release. Why the shoes are all burned up in it. Okay, I'm gonna try adjusting the pivot again. barely put pressure on the shoe just enough to hold them up and then I tighten them, I force them on. Force them on, I think it's flexing the plate causing me issues. That's barely even hitting it. How far is the pedal moving? What, when you just did that? Maybe. So hit your pedal, how much does it take to make the brake work? Just barely move it down until it touches. Maybe like a half inch right there. Put pressure on it. Put more pressure, a little good pressure. How far is it going for pressure? That's only like an inch, inch and a half at most. Let go. It just releases instantly. It's barely dragging right now. That'll wear in. That's a lot better. I would say like half of what it went before. Push on it. So how much more did you drop before? You're about an inch and it's pretty well comes to a stop. So 
All right, so some good lubricant on parts and free up other stuff. Seems to make the brakes work better for some reason. I don't know why. It's hard to believe, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, now I gotta try to get this chain back in here. Yeah, here, I'll get there. it. I'll get it. I'll do the chain. Boy, I'm already dirty. This chain guard wouldn't attack me, would it? It will, if you're not careful. Well, I know I'm not careful. It's not a friendly chain guard. It's pretty sharp. Why don't you hold this up to help a little bit? You got two O-rings on there or you take them off? I got two O-rings on there. On there. You got the O-ring on the inside? Oh, yeah. Didn't come off yet. Amazing. Let's see now we got. I'm going to tighten the chain tension. Oh, there it goes. It went on. Official tool, channel locks, your head's in the way. You have to squeeze it. Which one am I on here? This one. How about this one yeah. right here? Let me move it back a little bit. Okay. The bottom one might not be enough. Where's your little clip? I can see the I see the clip. You always check your clip to make sure it goes over it so you don't have to force it on. Okay, it does go on. That one's fine. Now this clip's worn quite a bit on one side. See that side's new, that side's worn out. Oh, get up here you can see. Help. So that one side's good, that side's worn out. So put it on there like that, worn out side up. Clip it down. Okay, where's your hammer? You left it on the bench. It's hard to get good help. Did each pin once. Why well, you got your finger on the back side? We're trying to make the clip rivet in. That wedges the clip all the way in so it won't come off. Oh, that's now you gotta make sure, go down and make sure it's free. Is it free down there? No drag? No, right here. Make sure it wobbles. Checking the length to make sure it rotates. It doesn't rotate though, it goes up and down. Oh, yeah. It's Twist it like this. Is it free? Yeah. Okay, not binding. Perfect. No. If they bind up, it'll chew up the chain. Did you get dirty? I used to have a dirty rag around here, but somebody stole it. Me too, but somebody stole mine. Oh, here, here it is, right here. I got mine. Well, that's the clean one. This is the dirty one over here. That was like brand new. Clean! That's clean. That's brand new. <laughs> It's clean as your pants are. So it's close yeah. Right. Okay, does it rotate still? It'll lock up. How's the chain clearance? It's all right. Find a tight spot. I just don't. Know. Just looking at the hose there, making sure it's. You have to find a tight spot. Now, if you rotate it and you watch the chain go up and down, when it goes all the way up, it's a tight spot. See how we're tight right there? Uh huh. So that's your tight spot here. So drop the bike down. We'll see how much it changes again. This swing arm's going downhill like this, so it changes a lot. But when the swing arm is flat, it's when the chain's longest. Well, we've got the most difference between the centers. Okay, so now we just lost about half our clearance. Okay, now push on the license plate here on the bracket. Just straight down like that. Don't pull on it, just push down. Ready? Put some pressure on it. Okay, that duplicates his fat ass on there. And see how we only got only like a finger clearance at that? So that's where you want to be at. That's not yanking on it, that's just using your finger. Now, yesterday the camera took a crap because uh, we ran a hard drive space. Evidently 26 and a half gig is all this camera will hold. And so we had to adjust the brake switch here, which we're still not sure if it's adjusted right. 
and the other thing we have to adjust this brake lever here, which will obviously adjust as all this. So we put the pan the clutch, not the clutch, damn it. We put the brake lever on over here. We had to readjust the location where the spline was. We want to have it just hits up against this. So we're hitting right here. You hear that banging? That's where it just hits here. And your stop is right over here, which adjusts where the pedal sits. Now, if you move that bolt longer, you see how the pedal drops down. If we move this up, then this will slam up into here even harder. So you want to where it hits on this first, when the normal use. But if you slam it, you can hear it does hit up in here. But you have to slam it to do that. That's not normal Blake application. So you adjust it right here. So that's how you do that. And then you got to come back and readjust the brake back here to actually adjust the shoes. So you have to do it right. The other thing you want to make sure is, is when you stand on the brake, go stand on it hard, you want to make sure it doesn't bottom out. Yeah, see, you still got a, a finger and a half of clearance at full full pressure. Okay, let go. So that's the other thing you want to make sure. Now when this lever gets too far back, the leverage ratio gets all screwed up. Ideally, you want the brake to work just over center. Put the brake all the way on again real hard. See, he's really hard on the brake, and we're not quite the center. Okay, let that come back. So theoretically, you should run this a little bit further to get maximum leverage ratio. Right. In the real world, this is about the right distance under here. You want to have about an inch under here. When it starts getting up to an inch and a quarter, sticking out, it starts, a lot of times, we hit up under here. This cover has a lot of clearance. Other covers have less clearance up in here, and they'll actually hit in here, and the brake don't work no more. It gets a hard stop here. And this kicker has to be broken in two. All right, so that was a finish from yesterday. Now you put primary oil in it? Yes. You? Okay. And we're going to run a brake hose on this thing? You know what? I was thinking about it. I was just going to leave it like, like how it is. You want to blow oil all over the whole bike? Well, I mean, so if we're going to bend it here and yeah. run it back to there. Where's your hose? My hose. You got hosed yesterday. What happened to it? We used it. On didn't what? We? No. No, it's right here. This one we didn't use. It's called junk hose. Right. So you take junk hose. And you're on here. Here you go. Hold on to that. Usually, it's running around up under here. Like this. Finger up in here. this so you bend this here right about in here so it comes back so this comes up into it and then this hose runs back like this and you zip tie it back here someplace and you get the natural curve of the hose to blow it away from the bike you can rotate you know, to whatever you need it to be to all hoses have some kind of a curve in them this one's got oil in already it's dripping again I thought you cleaned it Get a lousy job. I don't know if that was the hose I cleaned or not. You said you cleaned it. No, I cleaned one hose, one of the hoses. Obviously not this one. It must have. You can also run it back here like this. Further back. The thing is, see the chain right here? Right. It's going to probably eat on that thing. Because this chain goes up and down. What about the pipe? Push. It won't get too hot from the pipes there either. So you just kind of dump it through here. This one here, I'd probably just have it bend this around until it's bent like that. And it'd blow out like that. Your exhaust pipe's coming through here. This one goes down, this one's up higher. So you got room right here. The hose is gonna, this might hit the hose, but it's gonna hit back here more than it is up here because this is, it's frog its way here. So if you got tied right here, if it catches the hose a little bit, eh, so what? It doesn't really matter. You know, you can always let it come out just a little bit. It's dripping on my floor again. You didn't clean this hose out very well. That's gonna give us a false illusion of oil leakage. Anyway, that's how I would do it, but if you want to do it some other way, you can <laughs> okay, let's do it. do it some other way. But you need to clean the oil out of the hose before you work on that. Okay, I'm going to get working on the motor, so that's all right with you. Yeah. We keep screwing around all day on the rest of the bike again, but we need to work on the motor. It's missing something. Well, I'm not sure what's missing, but something's missing. <laughs> we should work on that. All right, we'll be back here in a little bit.